I'm going to give an overview of um, what is remote learning. All right, so the first thing I, I want you to do is um, go to menti.com if you're not driving on your, on your computer, laptop, go to www.menti.com, use this code and type in what does remote e-learning mean to you? And you could type in multiple responses. Learning without physical interaction, okay? Studying in your pajamas. Okay, having to motivate yourself. Learning without all your clothes on. All right, some people wanna uh, uh, get personal here. Digital efficient way to deliver information to students. Dry, dry learning, uh, I'm not sure what that means. Um, learning from a distance, the future of education, Sharing information with a distant person, mean using technology. Okay, getting or sharing information, not real, not real interaction. Okay, um, all right, good. So uh, these are some uh, good responses. Learning by using technology without physical participation learning without wasting time and commute. Okay, all right. So uh, uh, learning without physical interaction, dry learning. I, I don't know if that means boring learning, um, not, not, real intera not real interaction. Okay, let me, um, let me um, focus on, 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 on some of those um, um, answers and I want to focus on those two answers. Mainly, um, I like to focus on that because the, the whole, one of the things to try to achieve with remote learning is, is to um, try to replicate the physical environment as much as possible and have as much interaction as possible as you can have in a face-to-face, -face. in fact, uh, probably have even more interaction. So what I just did um, with you all was to have that type of um, interaction uh, digitally. So uh, what do we mean by remote distant teaching? So there are different types uh, or concept of what we mean by uh, remote learning. And uh, one of the um, uh, things I want to con uh, uh, concentrate on uh, three major categories. We have classroom or face-to-face. -face. We have what's called virtual live or synchronous online. And actually, this is what um, I'm doing with you all now, virtual live synchronous. We're all meeting in real time, okay, at, at the same time, whereas uh, the the, the concept of online or e-learning really refers to asynchronous online uh, where uh, participants meet at different times. Um, in, in these two types of learning, uh, one of the advantages obviously is that we're all geographically dispersed. Uh, whereas classroom, one of the disadvantages is that we're in the same geographic area. Uh, again, one of the things I, I, I want to convince you all is that um, uh, in, in these both types of remote learning, you could have really good interaction with your participants um, that could replicate as much as possible the face-to-face. -face. And studies have shown that learning um, uh, could be as good, if not better, than face-to-face -face, uh, teaching for a variety of reasons. Uh, so here I have students used to carry laptops to classes. Now laptops carry classes to students um, and 
essentially, um, what one could do um, a lot, a lot of learning on on your smartphone, and essentially distant learning, especially asynchronous uh, uh, learning. The concept is anytime, anywhere, and and anywhere could obviously be in your bedroom, on your pajamas as well. I want to emphasize we have virtual a virtual class, which is in real time, and then we have an online class, which is asynchronous teaching. Now, in regards to um, um, virtual um, learning, we have uh, other definitions, a webcast, webinars, and virtual training. And here we have a graph um, showing here we have number of participants and the interactivity, the extent of interactivity. So a, a webcast, you have one person giving a lecture to maybe 500 people, obviously minimal interactivity. Then you have a seminar or like a, a panel discussion among maybe you know 50 people. And then you have a virtual training class uh, with maybe 15 to 30 participants. And, and most of you, if not all of you, uh, when you transfer your face-to-face -face courses to the online medium, we're really dealing with virtual training class where you have maybe 15 to 30 participants and the extent of interactivity should be quite high. Um, so, uh, and we'll talk about that towards the end of this presentation. Um, so um, let me, um, for the, for the sake of time, uh, well, um, let me um, get up, um, discuss um, one pedagogic, one aspect of pedagogy with um, online learning. Now, face-to-face -face, uh, teaching the. Um, uh, the role of the faculty person is to give presentations and usually that is mainly passive learning. Um, there's often little interactivity between the professor and the students. And, and studies, um, this slide shows how much we remember or uh, how much we learn in a um, typical classroom setting. With a lecture, we remember 5% reading, audiovisual, demonstration, discussion group, we go up to 50% practice by doing, 75% uh, and then teaching each other, meaning like in a discussion group. And that's a, a real interactive activity, uh, active learning technique. And here the learning goes up to 90%. So what I'm trying to say is that um, in online learning, you could, you could really enhance interactivity more than what we usually do in face-to-face. -face. This um, theory argues that we must provide learners with the opportunity to interact with sensory data and have them construct their own world. Essentially, let them learn from others and let them learn by searching for, for um, concepts. And um, so essentially in online learning and also with face-to-face -face learning, we need to focus 
on the learner and thinking about learning that not on what we're teaching. Um, there is no knowledge independent of the meaning attributed to experience constructed by the learning or community of, of learners. Um, so essentially what even in face-to-face, -face, uh, instead of having this model here where you have the faculty person just, just presenting, we really uh, should focus on having group activities, probably without the cartoons, but it's essentially the concept is active learning techniques or collaborative learning. And um, um, so in the online class, I like to make a pitch of aligning assessment activities and learning activities with your learning objectives. So you have this triangulation. And when, when you develop your um, syllabus, you have learning objectives, which determines your content and your activities and your modes of assessment. Essentially, assessment activities and learning objectives all have to be aligned with each other in order to develop a robust classroom learning. Um, so um, types of activities involve polling, discussion forum, debate teams, group projects, journaling, using Google Docs, peer review, podcasting, and audio, video, PowerPoints. Um, and so, so actually, I have some courses, um, how to teach online, and um, if I click on here. So this is a, um, a learning man management system called Moodle, where I put my asynchronous online courses on the web. And this is a typical presentation of an online course. So I have here a, a forum for announcements. Here's my syllabus. Here's my syllabus. Uh, uh, I, I could post an introduction video of myself. Hello, my name is Dr. Henry Silverman, and I would like to welcome you to this course, Ethical Issues in Clinical Research. Okay, so, um, and here I have my learning objectives. Here I have uh, an interactive video that I easily made. Uh, a member of the research staff, contact information regarding questions about research injury, and contact information regarding any questions about the human rights, which is usually the IRB. And then this is interactive, so I could. Elements. So please take this quiz, and uh, and here I have, I could check. Great job. And then I built in other interactive. Take this crit. And you could have um, I once they showed them. Develop this video, put it on YouTube, then I download it on YouTube, and then I have this software in which you could put on quizzes on the videos. Then um, um, I could, um, um, I, as a discussion forum I had with my classmates and I asked um, a question, please watch this 
uh, video and and provide your comments on the concerns it expresses for the scientific enterprise and then in a asynchronous form I I have all these um, responses from the students and then I try to um, in, interact as well with the with the um, with the um, discussion and again uh, I have all these responses from from the other participants and so I'm having an interactive asynchronous conversation with my um, with my students um, uh, I have a lesson plan here. Let me um, show you what that's about. So here, just uh, I have some content and they'll read this about, this is about waiver of informed consent. And, and then they take a quiz, they start a quiz based on the material. Um, and I got that right. And then I take another quiz question and I think I remember the, the right answers. And then you could comment on the answers, uh, correct. And then essentially at the end, you show your score. So um, what I'm, trying to um, demonstrate is that this is an example of how to construct an online course. Again, you have your, your learning objectives. You could have videos. Uh, these are readings um, on the topic. A, discussion forum, activities, the lesson plan, um, and, and then you could also, and then the last thing you're gonna wanna have is built in some modes of assessment. You have your um, quizzes, assignment, and so essentially, again, you have your learning objectives, activities, most of the activities are interactive, the forum, the quizzes, the, um, you can have group projects, and this is how the students learn asynchronously on the online platform. Any, any questions about that? Okay. And what so, does it take? So, I have a question, Henry. What does it take to learn how to do all these? Good, uh, good question. Um, it um, using all. Let me just say that developing videos, interactive videos, the lesson plan and all that, the software is very easy to use. You could do it at your desktop. Um, the, um, when I asked you to answer that question about remote learning, very easy um, software on the web um, to uh, get to learn. Uh, the, um, um, so, one, it's very simple to use. 
uh, it, um, it doesn't take much time. Now, to be sure, There is time and effort involved in converting your courses to the online format. It isn't one thing I want to emphasize. Transferring your courses or converting your face-to-face -face courses uh, isn't just merely uploading your readings or uploading your PowerPoint. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say you could do it in a day. Uh, it does take a lot of time and effort to convert your face-to-face -face courses to the online format. Um, again, it's more than just uploading articles and uploading your PowerPoint. You got to develop your videos. You got to get rid of the echoes. And I'm almost afraid to talk. All right, somebody, somebody who just is, uh, we're getting feedback here. Um, I'm going to have to. If you, let me mute. Okay, if you want to talk, you could unmute yourself, but that feedback was getting a little bit too much. Um, okay, so it does take a lot of time and effort. Convert your lectures into videos, interactive videos, build the quizzes, the lesson plans, develop the discussion forums, the assignments, grading. So it does take time and effort. But the other point I want to emphasize is that with all these tools, one could create a learning environment that is just as good if not better than the face-to-face. -face. Um, you know, my uh, theory about face-to-face -face is that students show up once or twice a week and they're not all engaged in the face-to-face. -face. They're, you know, their minds are somewhere else. They might not have done the readings when they come to class. And I think you'll all agree with me that sometimes it seems like you're talking to one, only one third of the class, okay? Uh, you know, think about the, um, the discussion forum. Everybody has to participate in the discussion forum. When students come to face-to-face -to -face class, not every student participates, and hence not much learning is going on. But it's, um, as I said in the beginning, this is just an introduction to online learning, just to give you a feel of what it's all about. Uh, there um, needs to be more training on how to convert your courses to the online medium. 
which could be done with virtual live teaching. Uh, and uh, the other thing I was going to say is, um, uh, well, one has to have the investment in time and effort. Um, so uh, enough about that for now. Again, this is merely an introduction to what this is all about. Uh, let me um, let me go back to um, so uh, well, let me just um, uh, well, let me just end with that. Um, before I go to the next presentation. Any other questions about asynchronous teaching? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. I have a question. Sure. Um, how do you decide the best teaching method uh, when uh, planning uh, to give a course? That's a good question. There are, there are different types or different ways in which we learn. Different learners will prefer different methods. Some people are mainly um, um, visual learners, reading learners, some people rather learn by themselves rather than working in groups. Um, and hence, you have, to, you have to be able to use different ways of teaching in order to make sure that the different, um, that the different learning styles um, matches all your students. And hence, I tend to use a variety of, of activities. The discussion forum, the interactive videos, the reading assignments, uh, group projects. So. Uh, now, not every week do you have to have all those different types, but throughout the course, I would aim to having all these different types of activities um, so that um, um, you satisfy all the different learning styles of all your different students. And from week to week, you're going to see what works, what doesn't work, because um, another important element of any type of teaching is feedback. Feedback from your students, ask them, how did this go? And giving feedback to your students. A very important element of teaching, any type of teaching, is giving feedback. And um, as, as a whole, I don't think we do a very good job of giving feed, students feedback. Um, but that's, that's a, a topic for another day. Um, so, um, again, um, it's, a, it's a learning process on what works in your class. Um, I, have, I have a question. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure, yes. Yeah, I'm Professor Taisir. I'm Director of Medical Simulation in AGU. Uh, I, uh, <coughs> my question is uh, in regard of the videos and how um, 
the videos facilities should be used uh, in terms of uh, serving the objectives uh, of the class or the session. How, how long the video should be and um, what exactly um, the material that should go in the video uh, to serve the objectives and outcome. Um, uh, can you please uh, elaborate more on how um, the video clips at the beginning should be utilized to start the, uh, the class? Okay, good, good question. Uh, well, the, um, the concept is small chunks of activity. You don't want to upload a video an hour long. Nobody wants to look at that, okay? Uh, usually the videos should not be longer than six to eight minutes. And let me introduce this concept of what's called the flipped classroom, where most of the reading and um, incorporating uh, content, the students should incorporate the content before they come to class. So they do the readings before they come to class and they watch the videos before they come to class. And when they come to class, that's when you have active learning techniques. That's where you have case discussion. That's, that, that's your opportunity where you have the students analyze the content. And that's the flipped classroom. And we call it flipped because right now face-to-face -face teaching is you give content in the face-to-face -face classroom with your lectures and the students could, could do that at home and come to class and get ready to participate in active learning, not passive teaching. And so videos no longer than six to eight minutes and students need to uh, look at the videos before they come to class. And in fact, students could listen to the videos as they drive to class, um, as they're on the buses or, or whatever. Uh, that's the beauty of the uh, videos uh, because uh, you don't have to do that in the classroom itself. Uh, let me... Um, okay, I... Yes, go ahead. Yes, please. Now, in the active class, the day after having the reading materials the day before and the short videos as well, um, are there uh, going to be another um, interactive videos or is just a discussion among the whole group between the learner and the uh, facilitator? Well, or yeah. how you will assess how how everyone assess the other at the end, how you get the feedback from the uh, learner and how they can um, also um, kind of evaluate the material itself that they got. Well, there's, uh, that's a good question. There's many different um, ways to um, 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 uh, assess. Uh, you could have a, exams, assignments, discussion forums, group work. Um, I mean, and all that could be in class or, or out of class as, as well. Um, and so um, doing the, um, 
assessment is also a, a whole other topic as well. Um, let me um, um, let me um, in my remaining time. Let me just um, uh, talk about. Let me share my screen. Let me say some words about teaching virtually, live. Um, you all seen my PowerPoint, developing effective and engaging virtual live workshops. Is that on your screen? Okay, good. So uh, let me actually, let me see if I could, um, Do it this way. Let me see if I could show you my other tool I use. All right, do you, do you see a, um, a scanning code on your screen? What do you see now? We see a slide. Uh, black slides with... What about now? Uh, yeah, we, yes, have, we see the... Code? Code, yeah, how to... Oh, yes. Okay, uh, scan the code with your smartphone or go to this website here. Now, in a face-to-face -face class or even online, people are using their smartphones. So I'm gonna ask you to use your smartphone and once you're logged in, I want you to address this question. What worries you the most with virtual presentation and giving a virtual live presentation, just like what I'm doing now? Eye-to-eye -eye contact is difficult. Okay, good. I speak for a good 10 minutes and realize <laughs> I was muted. Okay, get disconnected. Okay. Uh, it's following, right, yes. That's why I asked you guys to turn on your videos, okay? All right, let's have one more. All right, uh, all right, well, let's, uh, all right, these are good responses. So let me quickly go over. So actually the important thing about this virtual teaching is engaging your students in the live format, okay? And there are several different techniques to do that. And again, the first one, turn on the videos. I need to see you and you need to, to see me and we need to do active learning techniques. Use these software tools like what I just used uh, when I asked you to comment, use your smartphone. And also I, I want to say a few words about the, uh, developing a strong digital presence uh, in your room. This is my room. I want to own my room. 
and and get you engaged, okay? Uh, again, setting norms, leave the webcam on, okay? So developing a digital physical presence. One, you got to frame yourself, fill the frame, okay? Um, many times, I'm gonna pick on Adel. He had his... Um, profile on, but other people as well, you got to adjust your video, okay? You can't make it like you're at the kids' table, okay? Where you can't see, uh, uh, the only thing you see is your forehead. So Adel fixed his camera, okay? You, can, you got to fill the frame, okay? That's number one. Also, um, uh, eye contact. So in order to develop eye contact, what do you look at? Do you look at the participants or the camera? You got to look at the camera, okay? And hopefully the camera is right above your screen. So you could look in the camera and also see the participants at the same time. Um, another thing is, uh, well, uh, here on the PowerPoint, I have eye contact, smiling, tone of voice, body language. Okay, so um, um, somebody give me a, a emotional word. Just give me an emotion. Like what? Anything. Any strong emotional word. Um, well, we can feel 12 emotions. So uh, let's say I'm happy. Okay, happy. Okay, okay. So how do you say I'm happy? Well, you have the emoji that you can use and show that you're smiling. Okay, now what about tone, tone of voice? Let me hear you say you're happy. Are you on it with the strong tone? Yes, I am happy. Okay, okay good, very tongue. good. Now, use your body language to say you're happy. <laughs> with a smile, okay, I am happy. You could use your hands, and then uh, the, the other thing is physical space, okay? And you could uh, stand up. I am happy, okay? This is how you own your room, all right? And engage people in, how, uh, in what, what you're saying, okay? So a strong physical presence. Uh, the other thing is, um, I was gonna say one more thing. Develop a strong physical presence. So engaging people, um, uh, you have to have some kind of engaging activity every how many minutes? Eight minutes? Yes, eight minutes. You have to do something to engage the students. Ask them a question, thumbs up, a body poll or go to a poll, ask them to write something down. Um, and let me, um, now there's many different ways to have interactivity, okay? Um, uh, sometimes I like to annotate on my screen as you, as you have seen me do many times in this presentation, don't underutilize annotating, okay? Also, you could have, this is a slide I used with my students, and this slide was originally empty, and I asked them, circle the ethical requirements in research ethics. And I had them annotate 
the screen. You could all annotate my screen uh, with the um, Zoom uh, annotation tools. And again, that's interactivity. Um, I, I um, also encourage using the chat box. Actually, in face-to-face, -face, when students talk to each other, that's not good, right? You don't want students talking. Well, when I give a virtual live presentation, I don't mind that backstory that students are doing, chatting. That's okay. Uh, um, so that's another way they could in interact with themselves and they could interact with me as well. Um, so other things, um, again, raise your hand, show a slide on Zoom, a video, share a whiteboard. Um, I don't have time to get into sharing whiteboards. So um, actually, let me um, uh, share a whiteboard. Here's a whiteboard. Could you annotate on this whiteboard? Somebody, yes, right. You could use your annotation tools on my whiteboard. Could you do that? Yes, right. Okay, so we could all annotate together on the whiteboard. You could have activities on the whiteboard. All right, that's uh, another uh, way to um, uh, annot use annotation tools. Okay, um, or you could also write um, and uh, do other things as well. Uh, let's, um, I want to get out of this um, whiteboard. Let me uh, say just uh, a few more things and let me uh, then um, end. Uh, so other things, oh, and then finally, how many people have used breakout rooms? Thumbs up. Breakout rooms in Zoom. All right, one, two. All right, good. See, I, I just did an activity with you guys, a body poll, okay? All right, so um, breakout rooms are phenomenal. You put your students in different rooms and they could discuss a case for 10, 15 minutes, and then come back to the larger uh, platform and everyone could di um, discuss what they did. Uh, so that's the um, Zoom breakout rooms. And this is the, um, again, the digital whiteboard that I was just um, showing you. And um, let me, um, uh, I'll, I'll convince your top officials to buy whiteboards, okay, um, for your classroom. Uh, actually, what you see in the background is my digital whiteboard. Um, um, and I, I use that a lot with my virtual teaching. So um, let me, um, oh, uh, two last things about cameras. Uh, you want to um, uh, have a dual ex display. Uh, that's my setup. Maintain good eye contact, webcam placement, and then uh, uh, examples of web cams, microphones, very important, uh, headsets, some of you are using it. Uh, what's the, um, 
One last point. What's, what do I mean by front light and back light? What does that mean, front light, back light? The background light. Okay, so when you're on the video, should the light be in front of you or in back of you? In front. Yes, it should be, it should be in front. It should look like this and not like this. So some, some of you, uh, I, I have a, um, uh, let me show you. Um, in order to get the light in front, I have this, this little lighting device that I keep in front of me so I could look nice and bright. Some of you are looking a little dark. So if you want to do a, um, uh, a movie that is, you know, detective lie, uh, um, a spy movie, you have the light in back of you, make it dark, okay? Um, but you want the light in, in front of you. Um, so again, another way to develop a strong physical presence. Um, oh, I'll, I forgot to mention that when you fill the room, okay, um, it should be the top of your head is right towards the top of the screen. It's, it's really good for people like me who's losing their hair. So uh, take advantage of that. Okay, all right, so uh, yes, there's the lighting and let me just say, and thank you very much. Okay. So, any, a whirlwind tour on remote learning, asynchronous and synchronous, virtual live. Okay. This is just an introduction. Any, any uh, final thoughts? Thank you, Henry, for uh, this presentation. I think uh, the goal was to uh, expose AGU's faculty to uh, uh, what it takes for uh, um, e-learning, I guess, with the multiple uh, things. Uh, our um, faculty have been uh, successfully using so far uh, Zoom uh, since uh, the beginning of the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, crisis. Uh, and also the university, as you know, uh, have uh, a Moodle platform, right. which is existing. Now, uh, the question uh, that I think uh, most of us are interested in is, um, uh, what is it going to take for us to learn how to use successfully uh, the, the various tools, the various approaches to be able to uh, not only plan, but also to develop uh, and uh, uh, deliver uh, uh, online training. Right, uh, good question. So um, I, um, you and I and have been talking about um, giving training to the AGU faculty um, on online teaching, mainly with the uh, Moodle system and, and also uh, the virtual live teaching as well. So I have on my Moodle site, uh, a course on um, how to how to 
prepare for online teaching, the asynchronous on the Moodle, and also a, a hands-on course where you learn how to develop the videos, develop the lesson plans. It's a hands-on practice classroom. Um, also learn how to um, uh, develop and monitor discussion forums, okay? How to facilitate discussion forums. Um, and essentially, I, I give that course and, and also how to develop your syllabus as well, okay? And um, I, um, that course probably takes about six weeks. And when I'm talking about weeks, six modules, each module over a week or 10 days. Again, we're getting back time and effort, okay? And um, so uh, we need to talk on when and how I could um, deliver that training to your faculty. Uh, and it's asynchronous. The, the course itself is asynchronous on Moodle. Uh, and so anytime, anywhere, you could do it in your pajamas, okay? Um, no problem. Um, so um, does that um, answer the question? So um, I, I think uh, one, if I could call it a good, a silver lining with COVID is that um, online learning is the future. Okay. Uh, and there's a lot of advantages. And I, I, I hope I've been able to convince some of you of the virtues of online learning. I'm anxious to engage with the AGU faculty to teach them online learning uh, because I'm passionate about it. I think it's the way to go. Um, also, uh, you could have a blended approach as well. Uh, uh, all my face-to-face -face teaching, I, if I do a workshop, I do it in con um, conjunction with, with um, the online platform. So um, I'm happy to um, uh, interact with you guys with the online teaching. So uh, there, are, there are two, two other yeah. questions that so, are on the chat room. Oh. One of them, one of them says, uh, it's coming from I think Salman. Uh, how much learning objectives link to teaching method? That's first question. And the second one, uh, does the online teaching enhance the learning? Basically, they want to know how to ensure that uh, there is quality in delivering. Right. Um, well, just like face to face, there has to be a quality um, improvement program, quality monitoring. Um, in fact, um, I'm, I'm in my university, um, there's this concept of peer assessment where I assess other faculties online methods. How often do we do that face to face? Do we have faculty assessing other faculty in their teaching methods? Uh, probably not. Uh, but that goes on with the online learning. Um, feedback from the students um, and 
So that's how you um, measure um, quality. Uh, and, uh, and yes, the online, th there's been studies showing, uh, comparing online with face to face. And the uh, uh, the um, the outcomes are similar. In fact, in some studies, it shows uh, there's more learning with online learning than face to face. So that's that question. Uh, how much learning objectives linked? I, I'm not sure. What does it mean? How much learning objectives? Um, oh, um, I have a whole session on writing learning objectives and aligning objectives with the activities. So with the, if you have a learning objective, you want the students to be able to discuss the ethical requirements in research, then you have to have an activity in which the students discuss. So it could be a discussion forum. Um, all learning objectives have to be written in action verbs. So if you have a learning objective, the student will be able to list the ethical principles. Well, then you could just assign a reading because all you're asking them to do is a lower level cognitive objective list, whereas discuss is higher order cognitive objective, analyze is higher yet, okay? So uh, now and then you have to link your objectives with the assessment. So if I just want my student to be able to list, so I have an MCQ test. If I want my students to be able to analyze, I'll have an activity to develop their analytic skills, and then I'll assess it by a written paper. So uh, again, you want your objectives, activities, assessment. Also your readings has to be linked to your objectives, okay? One thing I had learned early on in developing graduate level courses is that I had this nasty habit of assigning a lot of readings. My students didn't like that. Um, also, you know, the readings has to be linked to the objectives because if they're not, the students are gonna ask, why am I reading this? It's not in the objectives, okay? So again, the objectives drives how you develop your course. So you have to know ahead of time what you want to achieve, what not, what you want to teach, what you want your students to learn. You can't just list topics. You have to have action, uh, um, learning objectives with achievable um, learning. Discuss, analyze, list, identify, um, and then you develop your activities and then you assess. Any other questions? Anything on the, um, 
That's uh, Professor Silverman. Can I just ask a question? Quick one, actually. Yeah, sure. I, I, I see you turned on your light. No, no, I just <laughs> moved closer to the, to the screen. That's it. Um, Anyways, uh, lately, and you know that that most of the medical schools have uh, shifted to towards the competency-based kind of curriculum, and I find it a little bit difficult to understand how far can online or virtual uh, learning really uh, ensure that the competencies are well um, um, yani, uh, trained and uh, well accepted by the students, and actually to enable them to be well assessed um, in the future. So I think that uh, I like this terminology that entrustability is our like um, uh, ultimate goal. So we need to be uh, quite sure that our students, uh, that they will be uh, in the future doctors can do the tasks uh, on their own. So um, uh, if, it's, if we are talking about a skill uh, and not just uh, an information, how far can the online learning uh, help us in achieving that goal. Give me an example of a skill. Um, for example, auscultation of the heart sounds. Um, okay. Um, well, now we're getting into the uh, realm of um, um, doctoring. Um, um, now, on one hand, you could teach auscultation online with the audio. Uh, and um, in fact, don't get me started with the outdated stethoscope, okay? All right, that's uh, another topic. I don't know why we're still using that, but be that as it may, uh, now, um, you, um, you could teach writing skills online, teaching skills, presentation skills, critical thinking. Could you teach how to empathize with patients? No. You need role modeling. You need the clinic for that. Okay, so nothing, obviously, so substitutes interactions with um, with patients. I mean, that's the real deal. Um, um, so uh, you need uh, the actual clinical environment for that. But having said that, uh, one could teach all the other skills online how to um, how to make presentations, how to think critically, how to um, do interviews. Um, I just, um, another example, I just finished a research project. I wanted to investigate moral distress among nurses caring for COVID patients. And I did focus groups online using Zoom. It worked better than face-to-face -face, uh, in the sense of organizing it. And, and, uh, and the interactivity was really good. So the, um, uh, the short answer is that you could teach a lot of skills online. There's a lot of digital um, tools out there. Um, and in fact, the, uh, uh, again, teaching interviews, how to interview, you could do that online. Good question. Thank you. Thank you very much. If our dean is still here, <coughs> we would like to hear one of his comments, if any. Yeah, I think he's still here, even though he hasn't shown his video. Okay, there is a, a, a final Hello, Prof. Oh, Henry. Okay. I'm glad that you are uh, 
delivering your lectures, Rosa, virtual Zoom, and everything is very went successfully. Uh, thanks a lot for the efforts you are doing. It's a great uh, pleasure having you with us. We appreciate all the efforts you are doing for the program, for the diploma and clinical research, and for uh, training our faculty on how to design the e-learning uh, courses. Uh, I heard part of the talk. Uh, I'm not able, actually, I wasn't able to attend all the lecture. I'm sorry for that. That's but okay. I, I recorded it. Really, it. It's really good, Diana. <laughs> appreciate the help you are doing and offering to our faculty. Thank you for those kind words. You are welcome. So, yes, I, I, I'll um, edit this video and um, make it available online for people who missed the presentation and in case you want to see it again. Yes, I think it's a, it's a good idea. Yes. We have a, a copy of the presentation so we can share it also. Right. Can't, Yanni, or I'm not able to attend. Good. I'll, I'll give you the link and you could put it on your, on your website or Moodle platform. Um, actually, some colleagues actually are calling me just because of there are an error in the passcode. The word well is, bar, is not part of the passcode. It's only the number, so some they miss the lecture because of that they don't they are not able to join. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, it's my fault, Henry. You can. I see me. now around the yeah, twenty six uh, participants are there, so that's a good idea. Number. Oh yeah. No, no, actually, we were forty before. Yeah. 40. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Good. Very good. Good participation. Yeah. Um, was really good, and uh, I thank people for those who show their videos. That gives me feedback. Henry, there, there is a last question, if I may. Okay, yeah. Um, the question reads, is the online learning accredited as much as online uh, physical learning? Yes. Um, all my... All my online courses, I'm, I'm an accredited provider and um, um, by this International Association of Online Learning and I, I give continuing education units for the um, but in general, in general, the question it, is more general. Yes, is it, yes. Is, right. It's recognized. Uh, CMEs give um, credits for online um, activities. All these virtual conferences um, are accredited CMEs. So yes, absolutely. It's, it's recognized by the CME organizations. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's not a fringe activity. It's mainstream. And as I said before, it's the future. And so let's take this opportunity um, to um, um, convert. Um, our teaching habits to the online medium. It it will be take it will take time and effort, but it will be worthwhile. I will guarantee that. Um, Sorry, yeah. one last question. I apologize. Um, so, what about people who may be at a disadvantage, like they don't have internet access where they live? things like that. So can we really convert fully to online learning or, or virtual learning? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. And that's been a, um, 
uh, a problem um, I, with um, the school systems uh, in the U.S. Uh, there's been a concern that students from uh, the lower uh, economic strata of our society don't have the um, uh, the the um, computers, the iPads, uh, and lacking internet capability, and that's uh, that's that's an issue. And I think this is where, and and that's a, only going to increase the inequalities between the different students. And I think this is where um, um, society needs to step up and make sure that uh, all students have the opportunity to learn remotely. Um, and every society obviously has to deal with it their own way, um, and um, um, but it's um, uh, it's it's um, having a computer or an iPad uh, is obviously essential, and um, I I don't know the short answer to that, only to say. Um, the school system needs to step up. So within your university, um, if there are students lacking um, the necessary tools, you need to find a way. Uh, and also the internet. Now, I, I, um, uh, I do a lot of virtual teaching with you know people all over the Middle East, uh, and uh, uh, the internet has not been a big problem, uh, though uh, some people have you know at various times poor internet access, and uh, one one tries to adjust. They have to keep on logging in, blah, blah, blah. Um, so good question. Uh, something to be aware about. I will, um, I will um, take a look at the uh, chat room uh, with all your questions and um, uh, and those questions we haven't addressed, I'll, I'll try and uh, address it. Um, I, I appreciate your questions. That, uh, that helps me, knowing your question helps me prepare better when I do this presentation again. Thank but you, Henry. Thank you very much. I, I, enjoyed it immensely okay uh, and i look forward to um interacting with everyone teaching you how to do this online and um uh, and also we're uh, all excited with developing the um the academic diploma program in uh clinical research. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of that activity. And um, um, we'll um, uh, strive to make it very successful. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else? Adol, uh, we'll talk more. Uh, I want to, again, thank you. I don't know if others, and I think now 
if anyone has questions, they can still either send them to me or to the dean. And no. uh, what we, uh, I wish uh, if we can get the link so we can uh, retrieve the data of the lecture again and again, and that would be probably uh, greatly helpful to us. Uh, you sure. know, if, if I may, uh, Professor uh, Taysir, um, we, uh, after discussing with the Dean, we thought about having this preliminary uh, presentation for people to uh, have an expert list to listen to with regard to what it takes to develop online programs. As Henry suggested, um, I think we are the first uh, at AGU to develop uh, a program which uses blended learning. So we are the first experimenting with this. Some faculty are from AGU and I was happy to see some of them uh, uh, participate today, uh, which is new to us. We don't know how to do this. So our initial uh, thought was uh, to ask Henry to share uh, with all of you, you know, what it takes and what are the different uh, things to consider in uh, e-learning. So this is just the beginning. Uh, it was not intended to, you know, make you uh, experts uh, out of this presentation, but just as an eye opener uh, for you to know uh, the different methods and also for Henry to hear from you um, what uh, potentially are some of the issues you think about, your interest, uh, the different fields that you want to address with the e-learning. So this is like the first uh, uh, presentation or first session uh, into this endeavor. Uh, I am sure that after discussions and after receiving your feedbacks with regard to what you've seen today, we could eventually, uh, working with the Dean, uh, come up with a more structured program uh, for the faculty to learn how to develop this. I think this is our ultimate goal, is uh, what is it going to take and how can we uh, support our uh, uh, academic uh, people into learning how to deal with this, uh, uh, you know, uh, way of uh, teaching and learning. Right, yes. Let's um, uh, develop a more structured program. This presentation is just like a, a long movie trailer. Shows you what's coming up. Does it make sense, Professor? Of course it does. And uh, actually already uh, we have practiced uh, uh, direct video transmission interactive uh, through Moodle and BBB system last year. And then uh, we had a lot of um, uh, video uh, directly going on <coughs> with uh, groups of 25 students. But anyway, this is not the right moment to discuss all this, but uh, we did uh, some kind of uh, work where we have uh, their transmission through the medical simulations to the medical students. And we were able to do a uh, kind of interactive session, uh, uh, dialogues with the students. But again, um, what we were lacking is the assessment of the, uh, what they gain at the end. Uh, we were not able to test that, but um, their exams uh, results showed that uh, what we did was uh, not bad. That's what I can say. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Any other thoughts, questions? All right, I think uh, we should conclude, Henry. Right, yeah, no, I appreciate everybody hanging, hanging around. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, everyone, for coming. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adel. Bye-bye. Yeah, no, Bye-bye.